What's up, guys? Video information here. This is Stock Market News Update for Friday, October 4th, 2019. This is the 11th update. Play this music and let's get into it. So we have Microsoft, Kroger, NVIDIA, AMD, and Baidu. This time, I'm going to start from the bottom up. So we're going to go Baidu first, mainly because it has a lot of Chinese terms that I'm going to make a fool out of myself trying to pronounce. This is going to be as American pronunciation as we can get, guys. I'm sorry. Baidu snags anonymous car licenses, bringing China closer to driverless future. The capital of central China's Huebei province granted licenses for companies to test self-driving vehicles, boosting robocar-related stocks on hopes that anonymous driver is closer to becoming a reality in the country. Internet giant Baidu Inc. got a license for five of its self-driving cars, while Shenzhen Heilion Technologies Company and Deep Blue Technology Shanghai Company. I just have to say, Shanghai has always been easy to pronounce. Why can't more just be spelt like that? We'll trial a bus each, said Hu Heojun, an official at Wuhan's Department of Transport. A Baidu spokesman declined to elaborate. Representatives from the other two companies weren't immediately reachable, though. Shares of companies involved in self-driving technology rose on the mainland Monday. Zingman Intelligent Transportation Systems Group Company and Dulan Technology Company both climbed by 10% daily limit. And Ningbo Shanglin Auto Parts Company paired a similar gain to close up 5.4%. China had ambitious plans for developing its transportation sector, including a possible target of having 60% of all automobiles sold in the country run on electric motors by 2035. On the autonomous side, the state council has emphasized a need to develop the technology in a full supply chain. Shanghai last week announced plans for limited testing of driverless vehicles following Shangza and Guangzhou. The city gave licenses to SAIC Motor Group, BMW AG, and ride-hailing company Diddy Chuxing Inc. to test cars with passengers. Shanghai Vies with, I don't know what Vies means, I need to Google that, with Phoenix to lead the robo-taxi race. For Wuhan, a city for about 10 million people, driverless vehicle tests will take place in designated parts of a 28-kilometer road. The official Xinhao News Agency said Sunday, it cited the deputy major as saying the city will provide subsidies at appropriate levels and that the trials could help put China on track on being a global leader in autonomous driving. Next, I'm glad that's over. We have AMD, but look, Microsoft still figures out how to squeeze its name in. So AMD Ryzen Microsoft Surface Edition. One of the key takeaways from Microsoft's launch this week was that a company was spreading its wings, was that the company, sorry, was spreading its wings with devices made by all three major SOC vendors, Intel, AMD, and Qualcomm. Both the AMD and Qualcomm design wins are especially important given that these companies did not traditionally have a foothold in this space. Both companies showcase unique silicone for Microsoft with AMD's Ryzen Microsoft Surface Edition going into the consumer grade Surface Laptop 3 and Qualcomm's Snapdragon SQ1 and the Surface Pro X. Honestly, that makes me want to invest in Qualcomm just by the name Snapdragon. We sat down with AMD to get the grips with this partnership. Just to cover the announcement, made at Microsoft's event, the Surface Laptop 3 from AMD will be a 15-inch laptop design focused on the consumer market compared to the Ice Lake version for businesses. It features a quad-core Zen plus 12nm APU with up to 11 compute units of Vega graphics within a standard 15W TDP design. If you are not looking at the screen, you probably want to now. This is unique as no other Ryzen mobile processor offers 11 compute units at 15 watts. The 15 inch 2496 times 1664 display has an odd resolution but focuses on the 3 to 2 aspect ratio that Microsoft likes and supports 10 point multi touch and pen support. The AMD version will be offered with up to 32 gigabyte of DDR4 2400 memory and 512 gigabytes or 1 tetrabyte of NVMe storage and vary in price from 1200 which is for the Ryzen up to 2800, which is for the Ryzen 7. So the first is for the Ryzen 5, second is for the Ryzen 7. This puts means, uh, this, okay, 
right here, guys. I had to wait for this part. Look what it says. This puts means they screwed up there. This puts means that the Surface Laptop 3 should be a good fit for some mainstream gaming and performance workloads. All right, that's it for that article. That sentence, when I was reading it earlier, it messed me up so bad. I was like, wait, what? Am I going crazy? NVIDIA Next Generation Ampere 7NM graphics cards landing one, or sorry, first half of 2020. By the way, there's two NVIDIA articles. I thought, why not? They were both really good. So GeForce RTX Ampere. Ladies and gents, we have our third confirmation of NVIDIA's Ampere-based graphics card launching in 2020. While we previously knew they were going to launch in 2020, we didn't know which half, and thanks to the reports by Igor's lab, we know it's going to be sooner rather than later. Leaked EEC certification and a report by Taiwan's top tech publication, DigiTimes, puts Ampere graphics card on Samsung's 7NM nod and will represent a significant performance upgrade over touring counterparts. So we have Igor's lab. Now I apologize, I'm gonna be repeating this whole, it comes out in 2020 thing with both of these because for some reason they just have to repeat it. I don't know why. The venerable Igor over Igor's lab has revealed that he expects Nvidia's Ampere GPUs launch in the first half of 2020. See, I don't know why they make me re-say it. Igor has proven to be one of the most reliable sources in the past. And this is the third time we have heard confirmation of Nvidia's Ampere GPU. The first and second being the EEC certification and the DigiTimes reports, respectively. Ampere has been a slippery fish since 2018, when leaks first started popping up of NVIDIA's grand ambitions, but it seems like Showtime is finally here. NVIDIA also took quite the beating in its quarterly earnings a while back, and Jensen would be very determined to go back to setting record-breaking quarters, and I would love to see that as an investor. So I am fairly certain we will see Ampere's flagship GPU arrive. Taiwan's leading publication, DigiTimes, has confirmed that it's coming out, that this is very, very interesting news for us because not only does it tell us about NVIDIA's roadmap, but it also reveals some very pertinent details about the process. We have previously heard of, in, oh my gosh, are they saying it again? Ampere's GPUs when they passed their EEC certification, but nothing more came up since then. Now, however, we have a, they will be launching in 2020. Okay, so let's go down here. Um... Hold on, guys. There's a certain sect. Yeah, all right. So right here, guys. Sorry. The fact that it is based on Samsung 7NM EUV process means we are looking at a performance advantage as well as a power efficiency advantage. That was AMD's one big thing over NVIDIA was that it uses less power. So now they're also going to be adding that. That's interesting. Not only that, but believe it or not, 7NM EUV is actually supposed to be easier to fab than standard UV multi patternering efforts. Think of EUV as a sort of reset of the difficulty curve as the company moves to a new light source. This will, however, require extensive retooling, but the economics of scale will almost certainly prove to be worth it. At a bare minimum, you are looking at a 50% increase, all things considered, and watt for watt. Let's cut it there. There's a lot more to read. Feel free to check out the article. Come on, Paige. NVIDIA releases a GeForce hotfix driver to address crashing and flickering issues. Imagine deftly maneuvering down the soccer field and taking a shot at the goal that would give your team the lead, only to have FIFA 20 crash to the desktop as the ball is in midair. Talk about sour grapes. Such a scenario is the realm of possibility with NVIDIA's recently introduced 436.48 GPU driver installed. Fortunately, there is a hotfix available. The hotfix driver is intended to fix a bug that was causing FIFA 20, FIFA 19, and Star Wars Battlefront 2 from randomly crashing to the desktop on some PCs. It also addresses a random flicker issue in Apex Legends, which if you guys don't know is a rival to Fortnite, and it's by EA. These were all listed as known issues in the 436.48 driver's release notes. However, these are two other known issues that are not touched by this hotfix. They include Power DVD, Blu-ray disc might not played using Power DVD, and Shadow of the Tomb Raider, random crashes to the desktop occur when the game is played in DirectX 12 mode. That's the end of that article. If you guys don't know what DirectX 12 mode is, because I wasn't sure, developers that add amazing graphic effects to Microsoft Windows-based PC games. GeForce graphics cards deliver advanced DX12 features, such as ray tracing, variable rate shading, bringing games to life with ultra-realistic visual effects and faster frame rates. 
So basically it's the next level of gaming because when obviously NVIDIA's GPU came out and most recently AMD's GPU came out, they both had ray tracing. They both obviously... Kroger to lay off hundreds of workers. Now, if you guys want to skip this, I don't even blame you. The next article is Microsoft because they literally just make two excuses when the real reason is just because they're losing profit and are trying to cut costs. But let's go. Cincinnati, Ohio. Kroger plans to lay off hundreds of employees, according to reports. In a statement, a spokesperson for the grocery chain said, as part of ongoing talent management, many store operating divisions are evaluating middle management roles and team structures with an eye toward keeping resources close to the customer. She added, store divisions operate independently, but all of them are taking steps to ensure they have the right talent and the right store leaderships. The company did not specify how many jobs were expected to be cut or where. Fox Business reports the layoffs come as the company invests in its online business to delivery service to compete with stores like Walmart, Albertsons, and other competitors. That sounds like you're trying to get that going and you're trying to lower costs so you can get your profits back up. That's what that sounds like to me. I don't know. Microsoft partners with KLM to reduce air travel emissions. Microsoft and the Netherlands-based KLM recently inked a letter of intent with focus on reducing carbon footprint by development of sustainable air travel practices. Per the, per the terms of corporate biofuel program with KLM, Microsoft will buy sustainable aviation fuel, or SAF. Remember that, guys? Sustainable aviation fuel, because it's going to be said a lot in this article, to make the flights taken by the tech giant's employees eco-friendly. The deal specifically covers Microsoft employees taking flights on KLM and Delta Airlines connecting the Netherlands and the United States. So have, if, if you haven't already realized, KLM is just like Delta, just like JetBlue, just like American Airlines. It's just a flight service. Notably, KLM has ventured into SAF vertical since 2009. Moreover, SAF strategically addresses growing concerns over curbing airline emissions and campaigns to reduce flight trips on large scale utilization. SAF is touted to reduce carbon dioxide by 80%. That is crazy right there, guys. When compared to fossil fuels, considering the entire life cycle, Microsoft is leaving no stone unturned to reduce carbon footprint across its own supply chain with such small, thoughtful, and effective changes. Per Eric Bailey, Microsoft's global travel director, the company's employee travel since 2012 is carbon... God, I'm losing my words here. 2012 is carbon neutral, sorry. Moreover, the tech giant encourages use of enterprise collaborative solutions, including teams to counter flight trips and reduce carbon emissions. The latest deal is in sync with Microsoft's strategy to, prom to promote the usage of renewable energy in a bid to keep costs under control while reducing carbon emission. In fact, by 2030, so in about 10 years, Microsoft intends to reduce operational carbon emissions by 75%. Again, props, those are some crazy numbers. Strategic investments in renewables hold promise. Microsoft is one of the many notable companies that are undertaking significant investments in renewable energy. In fact, reports suggest that Microsoft's cloud platform Azure has been carbon neutral since 2012. Moreover, the company has completed quite a few large-scale corporate PPAs to buy renewable energy. Notably, the company has directly purchased new solar and wind energy of more than 1.6 gigawatts and reduced emissions by 15.6 million tons of carbon dioxide equivalent. Now we just got to get factories and trucks to do that. We note that dependence on renewable resources to cut down on operating costs is just another way to be more competitive and profitable. And Microsoft's decision to do augurs well for the company in the, in the long run. Other companies like Apple, Alphabet, Amazon, and Walmart, among others, are also seeking to reduce carbon footprint by deploying renewable energy on a larger scale. Notably, Apple and Alphabet's Google have achieved 100% renewable target and are powered by green energy. Amazon Web Services exceeded 50% dependency on renewable energy in 2018 and has plans to hit the target of 100% in the days ahead. Wrapping up, Microsoft intends to achieve 70% dependency on renewable energy by 2023 for its data central power requirements and has been operating 100% carbon neutral since 2012. The, uh, sorry, notably, the company has set an ambitious target to fuel 100% of its global energy needs through renewable resources like solar, geothermal, 
and wind power, biogas and hydropower. Oh, biogas. I don't know why I pronounced it like that. I, I must be reading too much Chinese. We believe the ongoing initiatives will aid Microsoft to realize its green goals. All right, guys, that is it. If you enjoyed these, I really appreciate a, a big smash on that like button and make sure to subscribe for more content like this, as well as some other creative content aside from di directly the stock market. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching, feeding you information 